The Toronto Raptors are off to a fast start in the 2019 NBA Finals. The Raptors took game one last night, defeating the Golden State Warriors 118 to 109. It was the first ever NBA Finals game in Canada. Toronto got 23 points from star player Kawhi Leonard. But he wasn't the Raptors' key to the game. Bill Ryder joins me now from Los Angeles. He's the host of Ryder's Block on CBS Sports HQ. So, Bill, tell me, who was the big shining star for the Raptors last night? Yeah, the big shining star, Reno, was one of the best stories, not just in the NBA, but sports. A young man who'd never seen an NBA game in his life until he was 16 years old. Pascal Siakam was a force offensively. He was great defensively. He had the game of his career. He had the game of the night. He took big shots. He attacked the rim, and he certainly made his mark on this series as a guy you better pay attention to in a big way if you're the Golden State Warriors. You know, I love it when we hear about these players who, who finally get a chance to get in and get the attention they deserve. It, it was so great to see this. But it wasn't just a strong offensive performance from the Raptors. I mean, they also played solid defense. What did they do that really worked well against these reigning NBA champions? Yeah, and, and give the Raptors credit. They, at least on paper, are the best team in this series. They're probably not the best team in the series, but they were fifth in defensive efficiency, both offensively and defensively this year. And you saw that on both the offensive and defensive end. Last night, they did a lot of things. They played great perimeter defense. They were menacing in terms of their rebounding. And I think one of the things, it'll be curious to see what the officials do in game two. If you watch the game, if you watch the tape, if you watch Steph Curry away from the ball, they were really physical with Steph. They got bodies on Steph Curry. They got hands on Steph Curry. Curry constantly complaining to the officials. They made it really difficult for him to get in rhythm, to feel comfortable, to get to the ball when he didn't have it in his hands. And it was, a, and I know Curry had a really good night, but it threw the ball movement and that Warriors offense out of sync. When KD's not out there, things run through Steph, not just what he scores, but how he facilitates the rest of the team getting in rhythm. And this Toronto team did a great job of disrupting that. So I want to also ask you about the Warriors. Was there anything that you saw in game one that would maybe worry you? Yeah, I, I mean, what really worried me, and maybe we can chalk this up into the fact that they hadn't played in nine days. They had five more days of a layoff than the Raptors. But this is a Warriors team that when they win NBA championships, and we know they've won quite a few the last few years, they play really great defense, just like Toronto did last night. We talk about the Splash Brothers. We talk about Kevin Durant. We talk about their offensive excellence, and we should, but their defense has always been as good or almost as good, and they were just atrocious defensively last night. 118 points is unacceptable in a finals game if you want to win an NBA championship. Siakam doing what he did. Gasol doing what he did. Kawhi Leonard having his way with that team. I know Kawhi only had 20, what, 23 points, but he still was a force out there offensively moving the ball. There was rust, and you certainly heard from Steve Kerr and Draymond Green and most of the guys on that Warriors team that they felt rusty, that they didn't play a good game. They felt good they were still in it. If that's true, if that was rust last night and not the Raptors offense being more than a match for that Warriors defense, I think we'll see a different outcome or at least a closer game in the days ahead. You know, despite the rust, you mentioned Kevin Durant. The Warriors have had success without Durant still. Based on last night, does it look to you like they still need him back as soon as possible? No, it doesn't. And I'll say this. It would be great to have. If you have Kevin Durant, it's a, it is an absolute it is an absolute benefit. But I'm not going to overreact like a lot of my colleagues are around the country because of one game that the Raptors won at home in the first game in the history of Canada in the NBA Finals where that crowd was going crazy and that Warriors team didn't play well. They don't need Kevin Durant to win the series. I think the Warriors will win the series with or without KD. I could be wrong. Kawhi's made a lot of people look foolish over the years. But they've been through this before. They were down 2-1 against Memphis in the second round of the playoffs in their first run. They were down 3-1 against the Oklahoma City Thunder a couple years ago in the Western Conference Finals. They've been down against last year 3-2 against the Houston Rockets. They never panic. They always come back. And almost without exception, they always end up winning the NBA Finals and being champions. This is a Warriors team that knows what they are. They will play better. And in defense of that arena, they played really badly last night. The Raptors had an all-time performance from, from Siakam. Kyle Lowry played great defense. Those things are not guaranteed every single night. And still, Golden State was in that game. I think they uh, have every reason to feel very confident that this series has not changed because of one game. Okay, you know, before you go, Bill, I've got to ask you about Drake. The NBA warned the Raptors about all of his sideline antics. You know, Drake responded by trolling the Warriors even harder. Do you think, Bill, this is really good for basketball, or does the league have to put its foot down on this? 
Can, can I say it's both? I think it, I think it's both. I think it's because we're it is. It's like Drake. Come on, man. It is. It's funny, even if it's annoying. And it, I think it's a it's a crossover story for people like my wife, for casual fans yeah. who aren't the biggest NBA fans in the world. This is a way that the NBA can reach other people and be interesting. All of that said. You can't have Drake confronting Draymond Green and players <laughs> after the game. I mean, I'm a media member who gets credentialed, and if I did 1% of that, I would be rightfully right. fired True. and banished from NBA arenas. So it's great for the game. The storylines are great. The NBA has got to put a stop to it nonetheless. All right. I had to ask you about that one, Bill. Bill Ryder, host of Writer's Block. Thank you, my friend, for joining us. Anytime. You bet.